We've just seen that different scientific disciplines all study communication. Of course, they focus on different aspects of communication. Some scholars want to understand the workings of the media infrastructure, for instance. Others focus on the social importance of communication or on political communication effects or on one of many alternative perspectives. Well, it's of course not surprising that communication is studied by so many from so many angles. It fills our lives and society and we spend tremendous amounts of time communicating ideas, sharing thoughts, absorbing new information, being entertained or persuaded somehow. The communication, simply put, enables us to function as social, cultural and political animals. It makes sense that these different perspectives have led to a wide spectrum of scientific thought on the topic of communication. In this course, we'll go out and explore some of them and try to find our way in this wild jumble of theories, models and concepts. Perhaps a good starting point, therefore, is to begin with a brief definition of theory, model and concept. A concept is a word or set of words that represents an idea. It's of course important to clearly define the concepts we use. Let's take the concept of identity, for instance. It's easy to imagine two or more very different interpretations about what constitutes an identity. Is it how one views oneself? Or perhaps we should also take into consideration how one's identity is perceived by others? Or is that particular concept better described perhaps with the word image? Often scientists squabble over definitions, and rightly so, because it should be clear what we talk about. These discussions sometimes never stop, and why would they? Different people give different meanings to a word, and who can say which are the right or wrong definitions? At most, we can speak about preferred or dominant definitions of concepts, but even these usually change over time and from context to context. In this course, I will often stop to define certain key concepts, and I would like to stipulate that these definitions are, unfortunately, more often than not, quite disputed. If you are following this MOOC and you had some previous classes in communication or perhaps you have worked in communication or read books or articles about a topic, don't be surprised when I will define things slightly different or completely different than you have learned. For instance, when I said that media are every channel that we use to communicate, and this includes the voice, it's very possible that you have learned previously that only technical channels are considered media, which would exclude the voice. Because both definitions, and many more, exist in the scientific field. To make things more difficult, scientists, like many professionals, sometimes give everyday words a different meaning. If I would ask a random person in the street the definition of the word text, most will agree that a text is a message made up out of some type of letters. Communication scientists, however, regard each carrier of communication as a text. So a movie, a song, a painting, they're all texts in our eyes, ready to be read by an audience. 